Panther chameleons come in a rainbow of colors, and this is what makes them one of the most desirable chameleons in the first place. But what exactly are all these different colors, and what are locales, and what does that mean to those of us getting a panther chameleon as a pet? This is what we're going to go over today. Welcome to the Panther Chameleon Podcast. My name is Bill Strand, and I will be your guide through the life stages of the incredible Panther Chameleon. The first thing that we notice and fall in love with with Panther Chameleons is the jaw-dropping color. I got my first Panther Chameleon over 30 years ago, and when I did, I just couldn't believe that this thing was real. Well, here we are, 30 plus years later, and I still can't believe that they're real, even though they're right in front of me. So <laughs> what is all this color and what does it mean? Let's dive into it. But to understand that, we need to understand a little bit about their natural history. Panther chameleons come from the huge island of Madagascar off the southeastern coast of Africa. They inhabit a wide range in the northern half of Madagascar, mostly around the coasts. And if you've heard the locales, Nosi Bay, Nosi Fali, uh, these are islands. Nosi is the Malagasy word for island. And each of the panther chameleon locales has a different color palette. So for example, one locale may have a red base, another locale may have a blue base, but the red ones aren't ever going to turn blue. So there are definite limitations to the colors that they show. These bright colors are shown in the males. The females are a beautiful pink, salmon, orange with black bands, but there is no way to tell which locales the females come from just by looking at their color. And those of you who are fans of foreshadowing will note that this will cause problems later in our story. Now, to go on with this conversation, we're going to have to establish some terminology. Uh, what is a locale? Is it different than a morph? And how does species fit into all of this? So let's go ahead and establish that baseline. A locale is describing a animal, in this case a panther chameleon, by where they're collected. And in the case of a panther chameleon, we use the names of cities that are nearby. This doesn't mean that they are found in the center of the city. What it means is that's the largest city nearby where they're collected. So you go into the outskirts. Ambilobe, Ambanja, Ankarami, Nosifali, Mero, etc. All of these are different locations in Madagascar. And as we said before, if there's a Nosi on it, it means it's an island. Otherwise, it's just a city center around where the panthers are collected. A species or subspecies indicates that there's enough of a physical or morphological difference that scientists and taxonomists are saying this is a different life form. The dividing line as to what is one species and what is another species gets kind of murky. And I've had many conversations with Dr. Mark Schertz, who is a field scientist who works in taxonomy in Madagascar. And we've talked about this before. He has explained on previous podcasts how you decide if it, this uh, form is a different species or not. And I'm going to have to refer you back to those podcasts because it's not a clear-cut definition. I know we lay people like to use the definition, well, if it breeds with one another, then it's the same species. If it can't breed together, it's different species. While that is true in most cases, I would say, that's not an official definition. And so I'm going to just say, as far as we panther chameleon people are concerned, panther chameleons are all the same species, first for Pardalis across their entire range. There has been some work in the past trying to argue that all these different locales are actually different species, but the arguments haven't been strong enough that the general scientific community has accepted them yet. So at this point, they're all first of all Pardalis. And for that segment of my viewership that enjoys foreshadowing, you will see the plot thicken with promised complications later in this story. All right, next, what is a morph? Now, I used to use the word morph with panther chameleons a long time ago, and I was incorrect. And so here I am helping you not go through that stage. A morph is a variation within a population. This is like in dogs, like Shiba Inu dogs. You have the reds, you have the black and tan, you have a cream, 
and every litter of puppies can have reds, creams, or black and tan. That's a morph. Black panthers are actually a morph because some are black and some are the normal yellow spotted. Now we do have one more way that we uh, differentiate between chameleons, and that's in physical characteristics. You see this with Parsons chameleons. You have the yellow lipped, you have the orange eye, you have the green giant, yellow giant, and then you've got Parson eye Christopher. Now, Christopher is a subspecies, so that doesn't count, but all those other ones are the same subspecies, Columa Parsonii Parsonii. Now, when we look at them, it seems obvious that they're very different, but when the taxonomists go inside and uh, figure out everything that they figure out, they say this is the same species. You have to wonder if in the future they're going to be broken up into subspecies, but for now, they're the same species and we in the hobbyist community differentiate them by an obvious physical characteristic. Now, you can tell, with especially with physical characteristics, this is arbitrary and somebody somewhere decides that this is an orange eye. And then you could always argue, but wait a minute, this one's a little bit more yellow than this one. Is it still an orange eye or now that we having a yellow eye distinction? And so it can spiral out of control. And that's a reason why it was probably very good that panther chameleons weren't described with their physical characteristics because although certain areas have reddish, certain areas have yellowish, certain areas have orange, pink, blue, if you go to ambilobe, you're gonna be finding all sorts of different forms there. And so it would get incredibly confusing if we used physical characteristics for panther chameleons instead of locale. Now, within a locale, especially ambilobe, you're gonna find a red body blue bar, yellow body blue bar, and then you have red bars. And so uh, we are breaking up the locales with physical characteristics and it works on a small scale. And so there's our terminology. Panther chameleons are described by locale. And as you may deduce, this was completely arbitrary. This was a historical choice somebody somewhere made and we just stuck with it. So all well and good. But what does all of this mean for you getting one panther chameleon? And luckily, it really doesn't mean anything. You would expect that panther chameleons or anything across that wide of a range would have different husbandry aspects, different personality, different behavior, something different. And as far as we can tell, the only thing different is the color. So it doesn't matter which one you select, you're gonna be taking care of it the same way. It's going to have the same behavior patterns. And so the only thing that you need to choose is which color you like. And so let's go ahead and review some of the major options available to you. Let's start with ambilobe. Ambilobe is the most popular locale of panther chameleon. It has a wide color range from red body blue bar to yellow body blue bar, and then there's the red bar ambilobe. It's sometimes called the rainbow panther because it can show so many different colors in one chameleon. This locale came into the trade approximately in the early 2000s, but has quickly become the most popular because of its diversity in color, and it's a great choice. When we go towards the blue side, you have an Umbanja. The archetype of the Umbanja panther chameleon is a blue body with purplish blue saddles. It's a gorgeous chameleon, and it's been a favorite for decades. Now, it has been bred consistently in captivity, and so a number of colors have come out that, uh, that go beyond the archetype. And so it's very difficult to take a picture and say, yep, okay, that's an Umbanja. Now, a word on these archetypes are this ideal representation of what an Umbanja is. There's a lot of variation in the natural population. And so us deciding that the uh, the Umbanja is going to be a, a bluish type, bluish green type body with purplish blue saddles. Uh, this is something that we just decided. Uh, this doesn't mean that every chameleon in around Umbanja looks like that. And we shouldn't expect that. So whenever you start uh, thinking about the ideal uh, representation of Ambanja or Sambhava or any of these, just realize that is a grossly oversimplified definition of the chameleons within that area. There's going to be 
a lot of variation. The next one we're going to go over is Nosy Bay. Nosy means island, Bay means big. This is a big island off the coast of Madagascar by the city of Ambanja. On this island, you're going to have panthacameleons that are typically sea foam green or blue with red dots around the eyes. But Nosy Bay shot to significance with a certain form that lacked yellow pigmentation. This is just a random mutation that happened to some individuals, but it made them bubblegum blue. It took out all of the green and turned it into blue. One of these individuals showed up on the cover of a magazine back in the 90s, Vivarium Magazine, and that set off a craze in the chameleon community. Everybody wanted a blue panther chameleon. Lucky for us, some breeders were able to put together enough of a population of blue panthers and selectively breed them so the uh, offspring were reliably blue that this form was available to us. Now, because of this, Nosy Bay was plucked clean of any of these blue individuals. And so I'm sorry to say, going to Nosy Bay, you most likely won't be seeing any blue panther chameleons, at least not the bubblegum blue. You'll see the standard blue with the red rain around the eyes. But for that, oh my goodness, is this real bubblegum blue? You're going to have to go to the captive populations. And finally, we have some bavas. Some bava panther chameleons are in the yellow spectrum. So you'll have the yellows, greens, and reds. Although ambilobes can have some of the same color combinations, ambilobe and sambava are on opposite sides of Madagascar. So go figure. Sambavas are still reliably bred, and so you should be able to find captive hatched sambava if you like that color combination. Ambilobe, Ambanja, Nosibe, and Sambava are the four most commonly bred locales of panther chameleons. There are all sorts of other locales that you'll be hearing about. Nosifali, Nosimitsio, Andapa, Ankarami, Maruan, Setra, and it goes on and on and on. It seems like you can go to any island or anywhere along the coast and find a different color palette combination. So for your first panther, I suggest not going down the rabbit hole of the myriad of different locales. You will find the best of what panther chameleons can offer in the main four. All right, now we touch on some controversy. Some breeders mix the locales. And this is often thought of because people think, oh, if I mix an ambilobe with a nosy bay, I'm going to get double the color. Well, usually it's not double the color. Usually it's like mixing a box of Crayolas and what comes out really isn't that good looking. But some breeders have refined that line to the point where you get some pretty incredible results when they mix the locales. Now, the problem is you can't unmix them once you've mixed them. And so I strongly encourage you not to mix locales. If you just want a pet and you're working with a breeder who does mix the locales, then it's not a problem. They make just as good pets as any other. But if you have any ideas of breeding in the future, I highly suggest that you don't mix locales and that you don't start a program with mixed locales because they're going to be very difficult to sell in the future. At the very least, don't get into it until you've been in the community for many years and you understand the pros and cons that go along with that. A discussion about locales wouldn't be complete unless we talked about the Florida panther chameleon. Yes, for reasons that are a little bit murky, it could have been a hurricane, it could have been an accident. Panther chameleons were introduced to Florida in the United States, and they bred and they spread. There's a wide color variation within this population, but it's mixed locales. So if you're in the market for cheap panther chameleons, you may very well run into a Florida panther. These are wild-caught chameleons and have all the problems that come along with wild-caught chameleons, and I do not recommend you get a Florida panther chameleon. I absolutely do not re recommend breeding a Florida panther chameleon, but I bring this up because it is something that you might run into. Okay, so I think this gives us good foundation to understand the locales of panther chameleons and what that means. So let, let's go ahead and summarize the high level takeaways from this episode. First, a locale is identification via a geographical origin. So all these names attached to panther chameleons reference where that bloodline originally came from. Second, 
The selective breeding we have in our captive environment can isolate a certain look, but it can also bring out variation. So don't get too caught up deciding that every Umbanja needs to look like this one photo. There's gonna be great variation within that locale. Third, the husbandry is the same between the different locales, and so you don't have to learn about different variations. Now, I hope that we continue looking because I'm convinced there has to be some sort of difference between these uh, locales, but at this point, whatever it is, it's very subtle. So uh, just keep watching this channel and uh, I'll report it as we find it. But at this time, the locales are cared for the same. So our fourth and final takeaway is that the choice of locale is personal preference. Do you like the blues? Do you like the yellows? Do you like oranges? pink, the red. And if you can't decide, well, you can join the rest of us in having three or four panther chameleons. And with that, I'm going to turn you loose into the world to figure out which direction you would like to take. If you would like further information about how to take care of panther chameleons, there is a detailed profile on the chameleonacademy.com website. Just look for the species profiles in the menu, scroll down to panther chameleon, and you will see a care guide that you can download and a detailed explanation for each and everything on that care guide. Selecting a panther chameleon locale is about as difficult as figuring out where to go on vacation. There's so many good choices, but take comfort in the fact that it's really hard to make a wrong decision. I think you'll be happy no matter which way you go. So go ahead and let yourself get lost in window shopping. Now, I'd like to ask a favor of you. If you're enjoying this show, uh, please subscribe and like on whichever platform you're listening to or watching this. It is a way that you can help communicate to others what the show is about and encourage them to try it. And with that, it's time for me to feed some baby chameleons. This is Bill Strand signing off. I'll see you next time. <laughs>